my name is Fiona Peart and I'd like to show you how I paint a little group of figures. We're going to have a little street scene, so a group of four figures, and I start off with a pencil sketch. This is my pencil sketch and I've used a 2B pencil and I tend to just cross hatch. So there are no outlines. I press a little harder where I want a dark colour and I press a little less hard where I want a lighter colour. And I find that gives movement to my figures much, much better than having a photo. So that's the sketch I'm going to use. Now for a watercolour, we don't need a, a tonal drawing. We need a line drawing. So I'm going to use my classic brush. It's a soft haired brush, very, very soft. Um, I want the brush to, to hold a lot of paint and I want it to flow nicely. My painting technique tends to be quite wet. So we're going to start off with the first figure. Let's have, um, let's have a little bit of ochre in this and a little bit of raw sienna. So we'll just start off, a little tap, tap, tap of the brush. She's got some long hair, a little bit of hair over her shoulder. Um, then we want her, um, her coat. Now I want to make her coat quite a dark colour. I don't want it too, too dull, so I'm going to use um, Bluebell. Bluebell's a lovely colour, as long as it doesn't have yellow in it. Yellow will turn it grey. Complementaries will always make a colour turn grey. So that's the colour. You can see if you want a nice soft colour, you just put a little bit of the opposite colour into it. So there's my blue bell. If I want it toned down, just pull a little bit of that into it. So this colour, if it touches, it will tone this down. So this is the top of her coat. You can see these figures are quite small, but still I use this number 12 classic. I don't move down to a tiny little brush because I want these colours all to be nice and wet. I want everything to link up. The other side here, there's her hand. It's kind of the other side of her bag going to have one hand there in her pocket. So she's got a light coloured bag. I'm going to put a little bit more colour in this. I want it a little bit stronger. That's better. Uh, so every time um, I tap the brush, I'm releasing more pigment. If I just drag the brush, I lift it basically. So you control the amount of liquid on the paper by either pressing the brush or tapping with it. And the trousers. Let's have a dark colour, a little bit of indigo. This is going to be really dark. So we'll let that run in in a second. We'll get, give it somewhere to go. There's the other little leg here. Let them touch, that's fine. Then it's just gonna link up there. Yep, and then back into my lighter color. I'm gonna scoop a little bit of that in just to tone it down a little bit, so. Not quite as bright. Of course, this will run in. I'm expecting that to happen. That's going to darken it. So that's her little feet there. And then her bag. Now, I don't want it all to run in, but I just want it to catch. And that's her bag. So you know she's got a bag. It's not been attached later, it, so it blends in, but you can kind of see it. So it's a nice soft focus bag. So that's how I like to do um, watercolour figures. I want to keep them nice and simple, nice and loose. So the next one, we'll have this chap. Let's have a little bit of bluebell with that. So his hair's a little bit darker, a little blob. Sometimes, you know, I start a painting and it'll be a woman I'm painting and it turns into a man and it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to darken her hair a little bit. Right, so his or her jacket. So we'll, we'll go into our permanent wild rose, lovely bright pinky colour. And into that we want to just make it a little bit stronger. So I'm just going to dip in a darker colour. This is shadow and that's going to just give it an almost a burgundy look to it. That's a, there it is just catch there, let that touch. Little wiggle for the arm there. Little wiggle here. There'll be a hand at the end of that in a minute. So we have a little bit of movement in this, just so it's not straight along the bottom, just as if it's maybe a breeze or, yeah, that's quite nice. Clean the brush out. We're going to now put um, a little bit of flesh colour at the end of those arms, just, just so that there's hands, but not, not too much. Oh, we need to put hers, didn't we? Forgot hers at the end, a little hand there. And it will merge in, but that's all you need. Then let's give her some kind of blue jeans. So I'm going to go back to this nice blue bell colour. And you'll see it'll look grubby if you've got any of the previous colour in it. So if you want a really fresh, clean colour, make sure you clean your brush out. I quite like a little of the previous colour left in there. I don't worry about that so much. A little zigzag here for the leg. A little zigzag here. Just let that link up. So as soon as I'm ready, I'll let that catch. Upright. 
and this one is a little bit flatter. So you can see that foot is up, that one's on the ground. So the next figures are behind those. I do want them to link, I want them to catch here. It doesn't matter if all of the figures are not actually touching, but I like them to be a group and I like them to touch somewhere. So these two are going to actually catch. So a little bit of um, blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. So I want a dark colour for her hair. So we just scoop those two colours together. That's nice. It's a nice dark kind of brown colour. You can use brown, but I prefer to mix a blue and a, an orangey colour together. So there's her hair. And she's got a bag. So it'll be a light bag. So we leave a little gap. So I'm going to use a lighter blue. So let's use... Um, this blue, this is a nice blue. This is a Windsor blue green shade. It's a lovely bright blue. But I'm just going to scoop in a little of this just to, to make it a little bit darker because we don't want this to look too bright. But this colour is going to run in anyway. I'm just going to leave a little gap for her bag. So there's where her bag's going to go. Now that is going to just catch. So it is going to link with him, but we want that. So she, this is going to look like a bag and we're going to let that catch a little bit later. Now then, the, the legs. I think I want that to look almost like a khaki colour, quite a light colour. So into like a Naples yellow, we'll scoop in a little of that colour so it's kind of like a khaki colour. She's in the distance, so we don't want to make too much of her. There's that one leg. She's got obviously these tight little jeans on, so she's got skinny looking legs, which is actually a lovely shape. Fabulous shape. A little bit of movement now, so we're just going to scoop the point of the brush through that colour, just, just the point, just so we get a little bit of dark on the end of this brush. And that's just her little foot there, and that little foot. So we've got a little bit of movement. Right, so while I've got this same sort of colour, this dark colour on my brush, move on to the next little figure. I haven't forgotten that bag, I'll just wait for that, so that's his head. And I think I'm going to do him with this khaki colour on his, his jacket. So, that's a nice, it's a lighter colour. He's going to have hands in his pockets. And he's going to have some blue trousers. See, it's already that little grouping's quite looking quite nice. So back to that same colour that I used for her. So he's going to have these blue trousers. Here we go. So a little zigzag there. Now that, that's just going to catch. Okay, that's the other leg. Now into the dark colour, so while I've got it on the palette I'm just going to scoop up into that plummy colour. That's that little foot there. Nice bit of movement there, that's lovely, like that. And then his hands, well we'll just scoop into that. Actually I've got too much blue on the brush. So if you do that and you think no, it's not quite the right colour, clean your brush out, change your mind, you're allowed to change your mind. And little hands there. Then we've got this bag. So I'm going to clean my brush out. So there's practically there's nothing in the brush. I'm just, I'm just going to take out some of the excess moisture because I don't want to flood moisture into that. Into my light colour. So very, very light. She's just going to look like she's got a little bag over her shoulder. And I'm just going to touch it with the brush and then leave it. So you, you're just going to be aware of it. It'll stay, but it, it won't all flood in, but it'll just seem like she's got something over her shoulder. And then the last thing I think I'd like to do is put some little shadows. I'd like to anchor all of my little figures. So to do that, I'm just going to... There's the colours we've used. If I just do this, a bit of blue in there. See, that is quite a nice colour. You could equally use a little bit of um, mauve or just... I tend to use the colours I've used within the picture. So I quite like that. So we want a little bit of shadow coming this way. So let's just... We want to touch the figure. And a little bit of shadow here. We want to just touch the heel little bit there. And this figure, th that foot is off the ground, so I'm going to leave a little gap. This one's going to touch because it's on the ground. So let's just, let's, it's a wider figure there. It's quite nice. And then she's, again, we'll just press a little bit harder. That's quite nice. That's where her head is. She's got a bag. They're almost touching, but not quite, so we'll leave a little gap. And the thing is, Sometimes you have to make the shadows up because if it's not a sunny day and you want it to look a bit sunny, you have to add them. So that's what I tend to do. Choose a light source and then just put the shadow in.